Hi, everybody. This is Skip Barr again, Solutions Architect here at NetFoundry, and welcome to part two of our Getting Started with NetFoundry Zero Trust Networking. Today, we're going to do, uh, we're going to create a cloud edge router in AWS uh, for this example. So you will need to have your AWS account uh, ready to, uh, you know, go through the steps and have it created and have SSH keys and all that, like we spoke about in part one. So Let's go ahead and get on to the next part. So this part, we have this. This is part or the step C in this uh, exercise. So we're going to be installing this edge router. And this is just a VPC, a single VPC with a single network, uh, 172.34.34. I do have a web server here that does not have any NetFoundry software on it. It's all by itself. And that's what I did, put this security boundary on here. We talked a little bit about the security boundary of bringing it to the network and then bringing it to the host and then bringing it to the app. This example just brings it right to here. All the security, uh, secure connectivity comes here, terminates there. And that is what that little half circle uh, represents. So we're going to go get to a web page that's sitting in uh, AWS by placing this edge router and it's associated, comes by default, endpoint in this VPC. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna bring up our, um, our web console. So we still have this, you notice we have our two routers. We have our policy. Now we're ready to to get our ed next edge router created, which is going to be in the cloud. Okay, so we'll hit create. We'll call this um, skip cloud router. We have to build the construct of them in the in the in the console here. Then we're going to build it in a, in the AWS, and then we're going to register it. So the uh, identity is installed on the, in the cloud. Let's skip cloud router AWS demo. Okay, I don't need an attribute for this guy. Let's just leave it customer hosted this time. And we'll just hit create. Good, now you notice I have a registration key. We'll save this, we're gonna need it later. Now we're gonna go over to Amazon, go to EC2. And I'm in Oregon, I'm going to the West. And that's where that network lives. This 3434.0, it's AWS West 2, okay. Now go to instances and we'll say, this is the website I'm gonna go after that right here. You, know, you remember I've seen that 3434.53 right here. Oh, back, all right. So let's go back over here and let's create, launch an instance. Now we'll type here, mark, we'll search for NetFoundry. Okay, one result in the AWS marketplace. I can come over here and get it or I can just hit it from right here. NetFoundry Edge Router, hit select. If you don't get brought right here, you may have to, uh, accept the end user license agreement right here. It'll prompt you usually. If not, uh, you'll have to go to the marketplace and accept the uh, usage license. And then you'll hit create. All right, for the sake of testing, take the smallest one you need right here. T3 small should be fine for any exercise. Instance details, one instance is fine. I'll collect my network. I'll go with um, Oregon Net. I have one subnet. And I will get a public IP address for this guy. Everything else default. Storage is fine. Tags are fine. Configure security group. Um, that is fine. Create a new one. I have, or you can have it and just name it to something that Foundry um, demo. SSH, if you want to put. Um, no, your IP in there I, for this demo, I'm going to tear it down anyway. I just leave it wide open. I could put my IP in there and that will go. Um, let me just uh, access it from my IP. Okay, it's wide open for SSH right now. 
and I will go with Oregon IM key, hit like that, launch instance. Okay. So let's go back and take a look at what we've done. So we've created this edge router right here. We have a key that we're going to log into this router with, and we're going to register him, and then that'll bring him up online. So he'll be uh, with under the management of the controller. Hit escape. You'll notice that um, this guy also created an endpoint right here. Uh, skip cloud router AWS demo. So I have that uh, an endpoint that's also created on its behalf, and we use that endpoint to terminate services. So the edge router, the endpoint. Okay. Good. So I will take a small break while this guy builds and get back with you. Okay, so it looks like our edge router has completed here. So we'll just call it skip demo edge router. And you notice all that's running, all the checks completed. So, all right, so we have this guy. And here's his public IP. Now we're going to log into him. So we'll copy that IP and I'll come back over here to my SSH client, put that in there, specify a username. This is all documented, standard username. Default username is Ziggy, Z I G G Y. This runs on Ubuntu. And I'll say advanced SSH settings. And I'll say use a private key. And I'll go find that key. I believe it was called uh, uh, Oregon IAM. Boom. And hit OK. There we go. So that's the default. This is the public IP. We have SSH2. This is the private IP, 172.34.34. So it is, in fact, on the same network as this guy. It's a class, class C network. So he's on the same network as 53. So and if I can get to that router, then that guy can reach out and get that service from this particular host. Come back over here. And we'll go back to our instance and get our key. So come back to endpoints. We'll go back to edge routers. And we'll go back to skip cloud router and we're gonna copy this key. You know, and it copied that to my clipboard. So then we can come back to the command line and we'll just run this command just like it says right there. So we'll go sudo router registration. Oh, copy it. Copy that key in there. I don't know, back and get it, copy. There we go. And then uh, hit enter. So what that does is that that script reaches out to our controller and the controller says, hey, an authenticated user of your console created this key for an edge router. Is this correct? Can I participate? Controller says, yep, I did issue that key to the to the web console for that user. He can participate in this network and he'll get registered. So let's just see if that happens. And it takes a little thing, it sets up the firewall rules for the host itself of on-ramping, off-ramping traffic uh, in its local network and from the um, associated edge routers that it connects to. And it also sets up an instance of a salt minion. We, that's how we can do our updating of all of our routers. As we bring on new code, we can use salt integration to, um, you know, one touch upgrade everything kind of uh, at the same time. Registration is complete. So that guy's good and ready to go. All right. So that means the endpoint software as well as the router itself. And you can say, I think it's uh, NF help. Yeah, so it tells you all the commands you can run here. So you can go ZT router dash status. Tells you it's running. ZT dash logs, I believe. Nothing going on there yet. Okay. 
the uh oh ZD, we can do ZD router logs now it's got to have something we have done that there so it kind of shows all the logs for it um don't see any problems right now for this guy so just want to let you know that nf help is there if you want to know how to interact with the net foundry code is what you should look at um so that guy is nothing else to do with right now so we can essentially log out of that and we come back over here. And that completes the second video today. Just wanted to show this guy will come online and should show green pretty soon here. It can be a little bit of a delay sometimes when it's uh, after it gets registered and then it picks up. I think it's like a three minute at most um, uh, timer that collects the new data for the registration status. So there's a uh, that's how you set up a, a cloud edge router that has the endpoint installed that can build, uh, can install services and terminate services uh, for your network in Amazon. So I'll see you on part three. Thanks for joining.